Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. This video is all about booming, which if you're unfamiliar is making a ton of villagers on usually three, four, or sometimes even more town centers to grow your economy as fast as possible. The goal is to get to 100 to 120 villagers quickly and make little to no military along the way. It's common to do on closed maps like Arena or Black Forest when you're safely walled, though it is something you'll see from pocket players on all maps and even sometimes on one vs ones The question is which civilizations are best at doing this and to try to quantify the effect of their various bonuses. Let's check it out. Now before we start, I do have to point out that some bonuses have a one-time effect and others can last the entire game. So to standardize things, I'm going to choose a cutoff of 25 in-game minutes and how much bonuses have helped you by that point. At 25 minutes, it's very possible to have over 90 villagers, so you might be fairly close to the number that you're aiming for. Bonuses helping after that point might make for a strong late-game civilization, but not necessarily a good booming one. Take the Goths, for example, who have discounted and quickly created infantry, which potentially makes them strong in the late game, but their boom itself is basically generic through Castle Age. Now the question is how to compare the various Civ bonuses. I considered playing a game with various civilizations for 25 minutes and seeing how many resources I had at the end, but that sounded like it would introduce a lot of inconsistency. Instead, I decided to spectate a reasonably high level 1 vs 1 arena game, and I'll be basing my calculations on two players that went for initially a 3 into a 4 town center boom as Mongols and Saracens. Obviously, there's going to be some ballparking here and a small sample size of admittedly good but not expert players. There's at least plus or minus 100 resources in every number I give, and as we'll see later, there are some very unusual bonuses that are difficult to quantify. Of course, that didn't stop me from trying. I'll start with the various civilizations that have wood bonuses, since they tend to be fairly straightforward. Looking first at the Britons, their town centers cost half as much wood. With three extra town centers built by 25 minutes, you'll have saved exactly 411 resources. You might make one or two more town centers over the course of a game, but the majority of the impact of the bonus is in early castle age. As I pointed out in my recent Britain overview, when booming, I like to think of it as two free farms for each town center, as that helps me visualize roughly the effect size. For Britons, I'll say their town center bonus is worth 400, plus or minus 150, depending on how many town centers you have. Next, a classic one is the Huns not needing houses. In the game I spectated, players had 18 or 19 houses by 25 minutes. Taking the build and resource cost into account, I'd value houses at being worth roughly 35 resources each. That's 630 resources saved by 25 minutes, plus some convenience in never being housed. Over an entire game, you're looking at a max value of around double that, so a cap of 1300 value in the long run. Again though, for directly helping with the main portion of your boom, it's closer to 600 resources being freed up. Next is the Japanese with 50% cheaper resource drop-off camps. In the game I spectated, one player had 4 and the other had 8 camps of various types. It kind of depends on how strategically you're placing your town centers, but for a typical boom, 200 to 400 resources seems reasonable. For rushing, I'd say this is quite a nice bonus, but not as much for booming, since town centers double as extra drop-off points. But what about the Celts and their 15% faster lumberjacks? Well, both players had gathered around 6,000 wood by 25 minutes. If we're really generous and give the full 15% bonus, that would be about 900 extra wood for Celts, all else being equal. After walking time, it's probably closer to 10%, meaning roughly 600 extra wood. 10% might be on the low end, so I'll say it's probably worth 700 plus or minus 100, though over an entire game it could easily double or triple that with enough time and be a great late game bonus in addition to helping you boom. Now let's take a look at arguably the kings of saving wood, the Teutons, with their 40% cheaper farms. One of the players I spectated had made 46 farms by 25 minutes and the other 39, including the earliest farms that had been reseeded. If we take the average of 42 farms and discount them 40%, it means that picking Teutons would have saved around 1,000 wood. Like Celts, this is a bonus that is going to continue to benefit you over the entire game, but even if it stopped at 25 minutes, it would be arguably the best we've seen so far. For newer players who are developing their eco-management, Teutons are probably the easiest to boom with both because of the total resources saved and also because you're so encouraged to make farms. 
The Malians, on the other hand, have the complementary bonus of everything except farms being 15% less wood to build. 15% of the cost of all the non-farm buildings each player made, a Malian would have saved around 400 wood. That's a bit underwhelming compared to the Teutons and looks to be maybe a tiny bit better than Japanese or roughly equal to the Britons. Now let's switch to looking at farming and other food related bonuses. Any extra food you're able to get in Castle Age makes it that much easier to constantly produce villagers. The first one we'll look at is the Slavs with 10% faster farming. Initially it looks like 6800-ish food was collected by 25 minutes. But after correcting for food collected before farms were placed and what was left on berries, the players instead averaged about 4,400 food collected from farms specifically. 10% of that puts us at around 440 extra food for Slavs. In the past, I've found they actually do a bit better than 10% faster farming, but even if we use 12%, it's still only a little over 500 food. I do think they're put in a bit of a bad light in this calculation because of the 25 minute cutoff. In the long run, it's worth noting that you'll need fewer farmers in total, letting you finish your boom earlier and put more of your population toward military. Another indirect farming bonus is to the Aztecs, who have plus 5 carry capacity. This basically ends up being a farming bonus for the most part. I found in the past it adds 2-4% to to their general collection rate, and up to 16% more to farming without wheelbarrow. After wheelbarrow, I found their bonus to farming is more like plus 6%. Applying those numbers to the game I spectated puts it in the ballpark of 500 extra resources. Add in their extra 50 gold at the start of the game and round it up a bit because the carry bonus helps more as lumberjacks get further from their camps, and we have 600 plus or minus a bit for the Aztecs. The next one I want to look at is the Vikings with free wheelbarrow and handcart. This is a tough one to analyze. Of course, free wheelbarrow and handcart increase collection rate, save resources, and save town center work time, equivalent to making 5 more villagers. The tech costs alone are 725, a 5 villager advantage for 5 minutes is another 500-ish resources, and even just a temporary boost of wheelbarrow on your farms means you can comfortably round everything up. You have to subtract the cost of 5 extra villagers, but this bonus is easily in the ballpark of 1000 and probably more like 1100. It depends a bit on the timing of wheelbarrow and handcart for Teutons, but in the majority of cases this looks to be the better bonus, and the best at least so far. For Khmer and their farmers who don't need any drop off points, I found they're comparable to Aztecs in farming rate with well placed farms and maybe a bit worse before wheelbarrow. The fact is though it's a farm specific bonus instead of a general one to all collection and by 25 minutes I'd say it's probably somewhere between 200 and 300 extra food. As a side benefit though the trickle of food does let you access what your villagers have collected earlier than the regular drop off points allow. Even if we assume it's helping with the doubled up farming collection rate and are generous with that, it's still not much more than a 300 resource bonus. For Khmer though, you could also throw in these saved resources for not making a blacksmith or market, and I could see arguing up to 600 resources saved. This one's tricky to speculate on, because Khmer's bonuses open up entirely different builds. If you play them like a completely generic civilization, you're probably missing out on half of their booming potential. Next is what I think of as another great booming civilization, the Indians. Indians of course have a staggered discount on their villagers, saving potentially a lot of food in the long run. The two players I spectated had 86 and 87 villagers at 25 minutes. Using a 25 plus 3 fast castle build would imply that an Indian player would have saved over 700 food in total. That puts it up there with the Celts in its effect size, and after fully booming could be worth up to 1000 to 1100 food. Of course Indians also collect gold 10% faster from all sources. In this case, that would have been roughly another 100 gold. Adding those together and rounding puts us at around 800 resources in total. So now let's take a look at a few civilizations that can get more villagers than usual. We'll start by looking at the Cumans, and in their case I have looked at the feudal town center and how it compares to the traditional 3 town center boom as its own video before. In that video I had a bit more theoretical methodology, and modeling it out I found it was worth roughly an extra 1500 to 2000 resources. That was compared to the standard 3 town centers though, and not the 4 that you might see in a particularly greedy boom. Modifying the comparison to 4 town centers immediately on hitting castle age, the difference becomes more like 700 extra resources for Cumans at 25 minutes, though alarmingly they actually fall 9 villagers behind in the model I used. I'm going to go with the 700 resources since the examples I spectated were with 4 town centers, but being potentially behind in villagers is a concern for sure. More than half of the resource advantage shown here is actually a result of making fewer villagers, which is not where you want the extra resources to be coming from. 
For another civilization with a town center bonus, what about the Persians and their faster town center work rate? This one's also a bit tricky, because the fact you're creating new villagers in Castle Age 15% faster doesn't automatically mean your economy is collecting 15% more. You could model that with a spreadsheet like the Cumans, but I decided to go with a slightly different approach. Instead, I tracked the actual numbers of villagers being produced each minute by one of the players and made the jumps 15% larger for Persians. The amount of resources collected is generally represented by the area underneath each curve, and using trend lines and integration, I got a 6.8% increase in overall collection for Persians between 17 and 25 minutes. Applying that to the game I spectated would be 583 extra resources. You have to take into account the cost of the extra villagers though, and once you do that, the Persian bonus is only really giving you an extra 155 resources towards your boom. From this, I wouldn't say Persians have an easier boom or more resources while doing it. Basically, faster created villagers means you're also having to pay more into your economy to do that, and those villagers take time to pay you back. The real advantage in this case is you'd be at least 9 villagers ahead by 25 minutes. That means you're going to reach your villager target earlier, so it's a faster completed boom, which is arguably the best type of bonus for this sort of thing. Another odd and somewhat related civilization is the Malay, with their faster aging up bonus. The faster advancing means they save 116 seconds of advance time though, which translates to 4.6 extra villagers. Assuming you're able to stay that many villagers ahead from 17 minutes on, that would add up to around 700 resources by 25 minutes. Deducting those villagers' cost gives you a net surplus of about 500 resources. If you can get your initial town centers up a bit earlier, you might even be able to extend that a bit higher. Now there are a few more civilizations that could be mentioned and analyzed. For example, Franks save 400 on farming upgrades, and Ethiopians have 400 extra given to them for advancing twice. I'm sure there's other civilizations I'm forgetting that also have bonuses in that range. Sorry if your favorite civilization didn't make it into the video, but I tried to include anything here I thought had even a long shot of being top 5. For anyone a bit lost in the numbers, here's the overall list, again with the arbitrary 25 minute cutoff and a healthy margin of error. If you're looking for a top 5, I'd say Vikings, Teutons, and Indians for the resources saved, and Persians in there somewhere for having the fastest boom, maybe even at number 1. There's enough wiggle room here to argue Cumans, Slavs, Aztecs, Khmer, Celts, or even Malay to finish off the list, especially with specific builds for some of the more unique ones. I certainly wouldn't consider this a definitive ranking, and that's why I didn't approach this in the normal top 5 style. But hopefully it was interesting to see some numbers put to them, and gives the various bonuses a bit more global context. That's all for this one though, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.